Buried beneath layers of earth and shrouded in mystery, a handful of extraordinary artifacts have emerged to challenge everything we thought we knew about our past. These aren't just old relics. They're revolutionary discoveries that have left experts stunned and history books in need of revision. From ancient technology that shouldn't exist to evidence of advanced civilizations long before their time, these rare archaeological finds don't just fill gaps in our knowledge. They shatter the very foundations of established history. Prepare to question everything as we unearth the secrets that have been hidden for millennia. And we're going to start off the list with a very recent find. This just happened last month, which was February of 2024, for those who may be possibly watching in the distant future. A dude stumbled on a massive ancient Roman artifact in a riverbed. It was found in the gravel of the Torre River in San Vito al Torre. Arvino Silvestri was the one who first spotted the ancient artifact and alerted archaeologists. The riverbank was excavated and the archaeologists uncovered a massive block of carved limestone, revealing it to be an ancient Roman funeral monument, weighed in at a whopping 13,000 pounds, and it was in pretty good condition. It's so big and heavy that it required an excavator for transportation. Pretty remarkable find and quite beautiful as well. It has an intricately carved figure of Erotes on one end holding a torch and a poppy flower. Erotes symbolized various things including love and death. The decoration style suggested that the monument was from the high imperial era of ancient Rome but at this point we still don't have an exact date range. At least it hasn't been released to the public yet. Again this is still a very new find but this wasn't all they found either. There was also a stone urn a limestone carving depicting a man's face and a number of bricks and tile pieces. Next on the list is what I'm just going to call the treasure trove. Now this news just came out last week at the time of recording this video. Archaeologists in Panama unearthed an ancient burial site filled with treasures at El Cano Archaeological Park. The burial dates back between 750 AD and 800 AD and looks like it must have belonged to an elite lord. The burial revealed the remains of a high status man who was likely between 30 and 40 when he died. Aside from bones though, there was a a whole bunch of treasure. Breastplates, belts adorned with gold, beads, intricate bracelets, earrings. There were even a pair of crocodile shaped earrings, which is pretty cool. They also found gold covered sperm whale teeth earrings. How extravagant is that? Not only do I have a necklace with whale teeth, but I gotta get them coated in gold too. That's not even all they found. They also uncovered bracelets and skirts made from dog teeth, bone flutes, and a bunch of pottery pieces. And on top of all the beautiful stuff this guy was buried with, he was also accompanied by a number of people who were sacrificed. He was incredibly rich, so he was just too above going into the afterlife alone. Next on the list, we have a horrifying pit of severed hands. Apparently severed hands were a big deal in ancient Egypt. Archaeologists made a pretty gruesome discovery when they came across pits filled with severed human hands. They were found during excavations of a palace near the ancient city of Avaris. These pits contained hundreds of severed hands neatly stacked together and the largest pit was right in front of the throne room. Researchers believe that these hands were severed from enemies captured in battles or raids. It's not entirely clear why these hands were collected and stored but there have been images found of soldiers trading severed hands for gold. So some speculate that they might have been offerings to the gods or simply just trophies of victory. Next up we have the Herxheim archaeological site. So back in 1996, during routine excavations, archaeologists came across this pit filled with human remains. Now that's got to be alarming even for an archaeologist. I can't imagine you ever get bored with finding human remains, but what made this find even creepier was how these folks had died. They weren't just the remnants of ordinary burials. There were signs that these people had been deliberately and systematically consumed by other humans. The bones all showed signs of butchering. Cut marks indicated careful dismemberment. It looked like these individuals were not just victims of violence, but also of ritualistic consumption. The pit contained the bones of over 500 people dating back to the Neolithic period. Some suggest these folks were eaten as part of some sort of religious ritual, but other researchers think this may have been more a case of desperation, possibly there could have been a famine. Next up, we have Neanderthal markings. So the recent discovery of ancient cave markings thought to be made by Neanderthals is obviously 
pretty exciting. The markings were found on the walls of a cave in central France and are believed to be over 57,000 years old, which would make them the oldest of their kind. The cave was first stumbled upon in 1846 during some quarrying work. It wasn't until 1912 that the archaeological finds started cropping up though, with a discovery of animal bones and tools that had likely belonged to Neanderthals. The cave seemed to have been sealed off from the outside world around 57,000 years ago, which is a hefty chunk of time before modern humans even set foot in the region around 42,000 years ago. So it's a solid bet that the finger marks on the walls were the handiwork of Neanderthals. So, so what are these markings exactly? They're a series of wavy lines, dots, and faint striations, and it's believed that Neanderthals created these engravings by sweeping and pressing their fingers across a thin line of film on the limestone walls. The height of the markings suggests they were made by taller beings, teenagers or adults, but you know, were they decorative, ritualistic, were they even made intentionally? They're still not sure. Now we head back to Egypt with the discovery of an ancient Roman city in Luxor. The news about this incredible find was announced back in January of 2023. Egyptian archaeologists found a very well-preserved Roman city in Luxor, dating back to the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE. It's now been described as the oldest and most important city found on the eastern bank of Luxor by Mustafa Waziri, head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. The archaeological team unearthed a whole whack load of these ancient structures, including residential buildings, offering insights into how people lived during that time. There were also the discovery of two pigeon towers used for housing carrier birds, meaning the city was very likely involved in communication networks at the time. There were also metal workshops found in the city that contained whole collections of artifacts of their own, pots, tools, and a collection of bronze and copper Roman coins. Next up, we have the 4,500-year-old tomb. This is another recent 2024 archaeological discovery. I really tried to fill this list up with new stuff. So this discovery was made about 20 miles south of Cairo. Egyptian and Japanese archaeologists stumbled on an ancient Egyptian tomb carved into rock over 4,000 years ago. I always say stumbled on. Like these archaeologists are just kind of walking around and they're like, oh, it's an ancient tomb. Obviously, there's more that goes into it than that. It's just the easiest way for my brain to wrap my head around it. They stumbled on it. So anyway, the tomb was carved into rock over 4,000 years ago, dated back between 2649 and 2150 BC. The tomb contained a whole bunch of graves and artifacts from different historical periods. During their excavation, the team unearthed a bunch of treasures. There were human remains buried alongside a vividly colored mask, a burial site from the second dynasty, and an incredibly well-preserved alabaster vessel from the 18th dynasty. In the tomb, there were also two terracotta statues depicting the ancient Egyptian goddess Isis and Harpocrates, along with a stela with a man's name encrypted on it, a man named Heroides. Heroides. I think that's how you pronounce it. You've all heard of the Moe statues on Easter Island before, I know, but just last year, archaeologists found a new one. This new statue adds to the nearly 1,000 that have already been found on the island. This latest statue was uncovered in a dry lake bed, the only one to be found in that location. So far, anyway. The discovery was made by the organization that oversees the island's national park. Terry Hunt, a professor of archaeology at the University of Arizona, was incredibly excited about the find and described how important it is that these statues be retrieved, helping to preserve the history of the Rapa Nui people. So with how much attention and research has gone into the Easter Island statues, why was it that this one was just discovered now? Well, they're saying it's probably because of changes in the area's climate resulting in the drying out of the lake that was surrounding the sculpture, and they're thinking it probably won't be the last one to turn up. Next, we have another exciting discovery. News about this came out just recently as well. A ton of cool artifacts were found in Brazil. And this one's pretty cool because this stuff was discovered completely by accident. This really was like stumbling on it. So there was a routine construction project going on at an apartment complex, but then construction workers came across a pretty alarming find, human bones, and then more and more stuff started turning up. There were also pottery shards,
shards. So these bones weren't recent. Turns out all this stuff belonged to an ancient civilization dating back as far as 9,000 years ago. During excavations they found thousands of artifacts and not only that but these artifacts could possibly reshape the understanding of human settlement in Brazil. The site known as Roseanne's farm was full of stone tools, ceramic fragments, decorated shells and bones which was excavated over the course of four years of intense digging. And in total, 43 human skeletons and more than 100,000 artifacts were uncovered. Archaeologists unearthed remnants of a group that existed around 8,000 to 9,000 years ago, meaning that humans moved into the region much earlier than previously believed. The leader of the excavation stated the discovery could, quote, completely change the history of not just the region, but all of Brazil. End quote. This finding may totally change the way we look at the timing and the roots of human migration into the Americas from Asia, which is pretty cool. And we're finishing off the list with the finding of a mysterious Anglo-Saxon artifact, again just in January of this year, in Langham, England. A treasure hunter made a pretty cool discovery with a metal detector. It was a small artifact made of gilded silver. It was just under an inch in diameter and 0.3 inches in height. Apparently it dates back to the 8th century. It also has an image of an animal engraved on top, along with Celtic knot-like patterns. Not entirely clear what the object is. The portable antiquities scheme, who are responsible for recording finds like this, noted the thing is similar to other items discovered in the same time period. But this one stands out because of its size and its design. Historian Helen Giak speculated that the spiral pattern on the artifact looked a lot like Celtic designs, and that the animal depicted could be a horse. Definitely what it looks like to me as well. She also praised the craftsmanship, noting that it was created by someone with a keen eye for beauty. And again, I agree. That thing, it looks fantastic. Number 10. The Dendera Lights when was the first light bulb invented? Well, it was way after the Common Era calendar started, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe the ancient Egyptians had some hookups for light bulbs and they used to throw dope raves. The Hathor Temple in Dendera, Egypt has carvings in the wall which look like gigantic light bulbs. The Egyptians may have found a way to harness some sort of energy to make light bulbs. If we're going to go super conspiracy theory, which we are, some people believe that the pyramids were actually power plants with copper wires inside of them. They used them to tap into the natural electrical energy floating around the atmosphere, pull it down into the earth, and send it into surrounding cities. If this is true, my Egyptian rave theory is not that far off. Number 9. Robots? We barely have robots now, and you're telling me that before they had toilet paper they were making robots? Well, not that high tech, but it's still pretty cool. In ancient Greece, Philion of Byzantium made a working maid. The way this contraption worked, it was a statue with moving parts. It was perfectly weighted with a pitcher in one hand and the other hand was open. When you placed a cup in the open hand, it would shift the weight of the statue, causing it to move and pour the pitcher into the cup. Basically the best bartender ever. He'll never cut you off. This was one of the only artifacts like this, so it's most likely that robots weren't commonplace back then. It was probably only the super rich ancient Greeks that could afford it. This robot was the 8K TV of its day. Number 8. Turkish Gilding over 8,000 years ago, the Turks were balling. They were putting gold on everything. They put gold on your house, gold in your chairs, gold on your baby. I don't know if that last one is true, but it was 8,000 years ago. I'm sure someone had to try. Who wouldn't want to put gold on a baby? That'd be dope. You have a golden baby. The Turks would use mercury to perfect this gilding process, and they were so good at it that we still haven't figured out how to do it to this day. It's 8,000 years later, and with all the technological advancements we have now, we still can't find out exactly how they did it. Maybe it was aliens. Maybe the alien version of Bobby Shmurda came down and helped them put gold on everything. Number 7. Lunar Tack Disc When you think of Vikings, you think of pillagers, murderers, pointy hats. But they were also some of the best sailors alive. They were kings of navigating the sea, pulling up on some foreign shore and cutting everyone's head off. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise that they might have been the first civilization to discover a compass. The lunar tack disc was discovered in Greenland in 1984. It's believed that the Vikings would use these devices at night when they couldn't use the sun to navigate. 
It's not certain how these devices would work, but it seems they would give the user a rough idea of where the sun would be in the sky after it was set. The lunar tack disc would work in parts with other things like wooden slabs and crystals. I never thought bloodthirsty vikings would be into crystals. You come home after a long day of mass murder and your wife's like, whoa, your chakras are all over the place. Number 6. The Bell I don't know if you know this, but coal takes at least 30 million years to form. That's why this next one is pretty interesting. This one is a brass bell which was discovered encased in a chunk of coal. The coal that the bell was encased in was over 300 million years old and the mine that the bell was found in was over 100 feet deep. The bell also had carvings which were similar to the Hindu god Garuda, but the bell was discovered in West Virginia. How did a brass bell with Hindu god carvings encased in 300 million year old coal end up in West Virginia? These are so many questions, but it might be signs of advanced civilizations existing in North America way before we think. Number 5. The Puri Rees Map Cartography is pretty easy now that we have satellites. We can see the whole world from space and just take a picture and then print out the picture. But then the printer's like, I can't print it, I'm out of color. And you're like, whatever, just print in black and white. And he's like, nah, I need more magenta. And you're like, I said black and white. Believe it or not, making maps was even harder back then. The Puri Rees map was discovered in 1929 by Gustav Adolf Deismann, and it was an absolute marvel. The map depicted a very detailed charting of Antarctica before it was covered with ice. It was made by cartographer Haji Ahmed Muhidin Puri. The map is so incredibly detailed that it puzzled the archaeologists that found it. Who was able to make something this detailed without some sort of advanced technology? Also, we can't compare it to what Antarctica would look like because it's now covered in ice. So, we'll just have to wait to find out if it's actually accurate. Number 4. The London Hammer This isn't some bad 80s hair metal band. This is the discovery of one of the oldest dated tools ever. The London Hammer was discovered by a couple who went out for a walk and they saw a chunk of wood coming out of a rock. They thought it looked interesting enough so they took it home. Later, their son decided to take a hammer and chisel to it and break into it. Inside, he found what looked like a crude design of a hammer. They took the hammer to some archaeologists and this is where things get crazy. The rock encasing the hammer dates back 400 million years and the iron used to make the hammer's head is over 500 million years old. The hammer's head is over 90% pure iron so there's no way this could have happened naturally in nature. Parts of the hammer's handle have been turned to coal which means the hammer itself is at least 30 million years old because the coal takes at least 30 million years to form. My guess is someone jumped into a time machine and got stuck way back. Never be the first guy to go into a time machine, wait until they work out the kinks. Number 3. The Coso Artifact In 1961, a group of hikers was going rock collecting somewhere in the California mountains. These guys were super cool dudes. They came across some geodes which are crystals encased in rock. They took them home to cut into them to see what kind of crystals would be inside. What they found was more than just crystals but a porcelain casing, a spring and some metal parts encased inside the rock. The pieces all resembled a spark plug but the rock was dated 5000 years old. The craziest part about this is the Kazo artifact and the three hikers who made the discovery have all gone missing. Super creepy. Number 2. Nuclear Reactor How old would you think the first ever nuclear reactor is? If I told you it was 10,000 years old, you probably wouldn't believe me. Well, this nuclear reactor, discovered in Gaboon, Africa, is actually way older than that. In 1972, a team of archaeologists dug up a 1.8 million year old nuclear reactor. They were able to determine the age through carbon dating and from the design it seems like it was man made. This is one of the craziest discoveries ever recorded. Some people think that it was a meteor that crashed into the earth and just left back some nuclear energy. But other people think that it was aliens who came here to bioengineer humans and create new life and then study it from a distant planet. I don't know. Hey, maybe everyone's wrong. Maybe some people are right. I don't know. Number one, spheres. If you find one naturally occurring anomaly, you can chalk it up to chance. But if you find over 200 in the same place over a 30 year period, then I guess there might be something going on. Metallic spheres started popping up in a mine in South Africa in the 1970s. There were metal on the outside with some line markings that go down the center. They range from sizes of 2.5 centimeters to 10 centimeters. If you break into them, they seem to have some sort of soft material in them that breaks down when 
when it comes in contact with the air. So far it's not that crazy. But these spheres are dated back 2.8 billion years before dinos, before almost anything. How could you have something that's clearly crafted dated so old? Obviously I don't have the answer, but we can speculate. Time travel? Aliens? Maybe this is human beings second run at life. Maybe there's been civilizations that have lived on this planet before and we're just another group taking a shot at life. Starting us off at number 10, the toy monkey. So it goes without saying that almost everything that is a notable part of the Conjuring series is also a real artifact that the Warrens found along the way. One of these such artifacts who made an appearance in both The Conjuring and the spin-off Annabelle Comes Home is the toy monkey. However, if it wasn't already obvious, it's not something to be played with. As Ed tells the reporters in The Conjuring movie, everything you see here is either haunted, cursed, or been used in some kind of ritualistic practice. Nothing is a toy. Not even the toy monkey. So what exactly makes this monkey so scary in real life? Well, allegedly, it is possessed by a terrifying demon who enjoys stalking its victims before eventually killing them. So yeah, not a very nice monkey it seems. Although nothing you'll find in this museum is terribly friendly. Coming in at number nine, a vampire coffin. As far as creepy looking things go, I have to say this is not one of the scariest looking on the list, but of course, things are not always what they appear. This coffin found at the Warrens Museum is not just called the Vampire Coffin because of the slightly goofy looking Count Dracula face on the top, but because it was allegedly actually used by a modern day vampire. Now, I'm not saying that this is fictional, but I will say that the details surrounding this are rather few. There is no file stating how modern this modern vampire was or how it came to be in their possession but I mean it's definitely very intriguing. My only question is, where is this so-called vampire now? Was it killed or is it roaming free? Should we be nervous that a bloodthirsty monster could be on the loose? Or was it more of a twilight vampire situation? I guess we will never know. Coming in at number 8, the famous music box. If you have seen The Conjuring, which by the way, if you haven't, you really should, then you will definitely recognize this next item here. In the film version of the story, the youngest child of the family, April, finds an antique music box in the house and uses it to communicate with the spirit of a young boy named Rory, who was supposedly killed by his mother, Bathsheba, in the 1800s. Now, of course, there are definitely larger things at play throughout the film, but at the end of it, viewers see Ed place the haunted music box inside of the room of artifacts, where it suddenly opens and begins to play its tinny music. Now, in real life, it didn't quite happen like that, but the real music box is safely tucked away in the Warrens Museum. However, legend has it that while it really does contain an evil spirit, it was not properly contained, and so some believe the demon could escape at any moment. Coming in at number 7, tombstones. When it comes to items involved in a satanic ritual, I am sure that the Warrens managed to corner that market. I mean, are there other haunted museums? Absolutely, but theirs is really the one that started it all. One of these allegedly satanically involved items you can find hiding about are a series of tombstones that the Warrens claim were used in a dark occult ritual by those who work on the darker side of the paranormal. However, what makes these tombstones especially creepy is that they reportedly belong to rather young people. And so the Warrens had reason to believe that the young people were not only used as a sacrifice, but then their tombstones were used to finalize the ritual. So, you know, just all around very dark and evil stuff. Coming in at number six, a brick. It's not all Hollywood-based sensations inside the museum. In fact, one of their most prized and feared possessions looks about as plain as you could imagine. It's a brick. Like, 
from a house. But of course, this is no ordinary brick. It's in an occult museum after all. This brick in particular was from the Borley Rectory, a now famous building that was demolished in 1944 after it was badly damaged in a fire. But what made it such a sensation was that prior to the 1939 fire, it had long been rumored to be the most haunted building in all of the United Kingdom which is a pretty tall order considering how many allegedly haunted buildings span across the UK. Allegedly, the night of the fire, there were over 2,000 reports of paranormal activity, including floating bricks thought to have been possessed by a poltergeist. So if rumors are true, that would make this brick probably the most terrifying brick ever. Which I mean, I don't know how much competition it really has there, but still, it's a demonic brick. It's terrifying no matter what. Coming in at number five, pearls of death. While it's probably a pretty safe blanket rule that you shouldn't go around touching much of anything you find in Ed and Lorraine's demonic collection, some stuff is probably a little worse than others. And this next one falls into the latter category. Notoriously one of the most dangerous items found inside the museum, the Pearls of Death is a cursed necklace said to do exactly as the name suggests. Allegedly, anyone who dares place them around their neck will be choked and suffocated to death. Now, my question about this necklace is, is it like a Frodo and the Ring style situation where it will call to you, slowly infecting your brain through mind control until it practically forces you to place it around your neck? Or does it just wait for someone to unknowingly do it before it unleashes all hell on the victim? I guess I will never know, because you can bet I won't be testing it out for myself. Coming in at number four, The Conjuring Mirror. Despite what the name would have you believe, The Conjuring Mirror actually has really nothing to do with The Conjuring movies. Instead, this haunted mirror gets its name from the fact that it was, at one point, allegedly used to summon or conjure spirits. Once in the possession of a man named Stephen Zellner, legend has it that Stephen practiced a kind of witchcraft known as catoprotromancy, I probably butchered that, in order to see into the future and seek out revenge on his enemies. However, the more that Stephen used the mirror, the more and more corrupt he and his use of the magic became. Eventually, it's said the evil spirits he had conjured to do his bidding became too powerful to control and turned on the very person who had summoned them. Soon, Stephen began fearing for his life, so as a last resort, he decided to reach out to a local priest to see if the evil spirits could be exorcised from the home. But instead, the priest put him in touch with Ed and Lorraine. Upon their arrival at Stephen's home, they immediately knew Stephen was in grave trouble. And so to keep him safe, they performed a reverse incantation spell to seal up all the spirits back inside the mirror from which they had been conjured. Afterwards, Stephen begged them to take the mirror away from him, and that is how it came to live in Ed and Lorraine's museum. However, don't get too comfortable. Despite the spell they cast, Ed and Lorraine still claim to have experienced many terrifying moments with the spirits they angered from trapping inside this mirror. And who knows what could bring them back out. Coming in at number three, the shadow doll. When it comes to creepy dolls, I'll be honest, it doesn't take much to freak me out. But with that being said, there is definitely a very good reason why the shadow doll is one of the most feared possessions in the entire museum. Now, what starts off this seemingly endless list of creepy things about this doll is that there is no definitive answer as to why it was created or who created it. But according to Ed and Lorraine's files, it was made using both human and animal bones and was absolutely used in satanic rituals. So it is definitely possessed by some less than ideal company. Said to have been found in an antique shop by a couple, they began to think something was wrong after they kept waking up night after night covered in inexplicable scratches. But it wasn't until the doll began showing up in their nightmares, telling them that she was going to kill them, that they decided to get rid of the terrifying toy. And good thing they did too. Legend has it that if someone takes a picture of this doll, she will visit you in your dreams and kill you in your sleep. Just one more reason to never trust a creepy doll. 
Coming in at number two, a satanic idol. As the story goes, in 1991, a hunter was walking through the woods on the lookout for deer when he began to feel an overwhelming sense of paranoia, like he was being watched or something. At that very moment, he turned around to see this creepy doll leaned up against a tree, staring at him, and he could have sworn that it appeared out of nowhere. Immediately, the hunter knew he should not be here, and so he began walking as quickly as he could to find a way out of the forest. Then suddenly, an old man dressed in all black robes appeared beside him. He looked like a priest, the hunter thought, but something wasn't quite right. Every step he took, the priest matched him, and eventually he became so freaked out, he actually debated shooting at the priest with his arrow to scare him off. But Instead, he decided to ask the priest how to get out of the forest. But creepily, the priest did not speak. Instead, he pointed off into another direction, turned around, and left the man alone once again. Now, luckily, the hunter escaped. And the following day, after telling his friends the strange events, they suggested that he reach out to Ed and Lorraine. Upon telling them his story, they explained that the priest was a well-known leader of a satanic cult, and that the creepy doll he had encountered was actually an idol used for ritual purposes. However, the Warrens, being who they were, wanted to get this idol for the museum, and so Ed ventured into the forest, found the doll, and brought it back home. Soon after, however, strange things began happening. Allegedly, one time Ed was speaking with Lorraine, turned away for a second, looked back, and she was suddenly 30 feet away and passed out on the ground. He called the ambulance, and she spent the next three days in hospital in and out of consciousness. And according to Ed, she actually levitated while in the hospital. The Warrens always firmly believed that the satanic priest was working through the doll Ed had taken from the forest and was trying to punish them for taking it. Let's just hope no one was ever hospitalized after that. And last up in our number one spot, Annabelle. You didn't really think I was gonna do a list about haunted things found in Ed and Lorraine's museum and not bring up the famous Annabelle, did you? Although nowadays she is locked up tight, this wasn't always the case. Back in 1970, Annabelle was gifted to a nursing student named Donna, but it didn't take long before Donna and her roommate Angie knew that something was off. After about a month, the roommates began finding disturbing messages lying around their apartment, warning them to help Lou. Lou was one of their friends who had apparently warned the girls of the doll since day one. Eventually, things got so creepy that the woman contacted a medium who told them not to be afraid that the doll was merely possessed by a young girl named Annabelle Higgins who had died on the property years prior. The medium advised them that Annabelle felt safe here and would like to stay, so they agreed. But that was all a part of the demon's plan. Not long after, Lou stayed over, and when he awoke from a nightmare, he found he couldn't move his body. And then like straight out of a horror movie, he says Annabelle walked up his body and strangled him until he passed out. After that, the girls contacted a priest who put them in touch with paranormal investigators, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who discredited the medium and said it was, in fact, a very dangerous demon possessing this doll. However, even now, despite being locked up, the doll should be deeply feared. It was reported once that a man who visited the museum mocked the doll and only a few days later died after losing control of his motorbike. So yeah, she very well could be the most terrifying doll on the planet. Well, that's all I have for you today, my little ghouls. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know if you've ever had a chance to visit this famous occult museum. If you did, what was the scariest thing that you saw there? Did I miss anything? All right, I'm out. See you next time, friends. Want to see more bizarre videos that'll make your eyebrows do the cha-cha? It's all about deserted shacks with skeletons doing the Macarena in their closets. Slap that screen like it owes you money and dive into the madness.